But what we have on our hands, a lot of Nigerians have talked about the cost of governance, the cost of running government. Um, at some point, there were stories about uh, cutting down the number of aircraft in the presidential fleet. People talk about the cost of running the presidency, for example, cost of running the, the parliament, cost of running the judiciary. A lot of people have talked about the issue of appointments and all of that. In fact, it, people have talked about the issue of corruption and how much people have stolen uh, in, uh, in government. What would you suggest in this sense that government should do uh, in terms of getting monies back, in terms of being prudent, in terms of being prug uh, frugal, to make sure that as much as we can, some level of austerity can be placed and we can have some money to put in the right places? I think you should understand that we're already in austerity. It's not about some level of austerity. It's a matter of who is carrying the cost of that austerity. And, you know, if, if the more that we wait, then the more that it becomes a contagion. So you don't want a contagion effect because some of the states that you sort of assume are doing okay so far, just give them a couple of more months and then give them more decline in oil prices. The center will be weaker and then the level, the, uh, the state levels will be even uh, w uh, m much weaker. Uh, I think that the you know, in, in looking for a solution, and I see you with the determination to, to find some, some solution, you know, to this. I, th th there is no silver bullet that's going to take care of the situation we're in. There is not a silver bullet. So it's going to require a series, a set of measures that are necessary. So I have said to you that a major thing is going to be how do you raise revenue in the, in the immediate term? If to raise revenue... In the, you, you would have to do some more borrowings. Do you really want to do more borrowings? Or you, you, want, to do, uh, you, you want to do more in, in, in intensifying your, 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 your uh, capital income tax, your VAT? Uh, they, they, these are all issues that require some time. So there's a timing difference issue uh, in, in being able to raise revenue. But at least you must start. And then on the, on the expenditure side, you need to cut massively. Some of the things that you're saying would need to be cut. By all means, we must do every cut that can be cut. However, let's not get into symbolic cuts because there are serious issues of structural deformity in the way that we, we actually are set up as a federation. And so those structural issues show up in the economic balance sheet of the country. We need to ask ourselves some hard-nosed questions. Do, how much of government do we really need in the scale of things that we see it today? The chicken has come home to roost. Yeah. Is Nigeria producing enough? Is, are, we, are we producing enough to be able to have the humongous size of government? whether at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local government level. So, and when you look at some of the, what, some of the massive number of agencies that gulp the resources of government, you immediately say to yourself, a Ross Sayer report, where is it? What have we done in terms of implementation of those? Those are the measures that you take in fiscal consolidation. So there are at least important set of points. Then on the revenue side, there are a lot of things that we could do by just trying to understand what's happening in that, in that opaque box called the petroleum sector. We need to get a, a better understanding, get a handle on it. it the, the, this is a sector that already had instruments to promote its transparency. It ignored that instrument. It's called the NEITI. The NAITI was supposed to enable us to know what goes on in this sector on, on a frequent basis. Now it is time for us to throw the shutters open and to see what are the revenue leakages that we need to get back into the till. All right. But Thank while you. we're doing that, let's not rest on oil. It is intense for us to start our diversification agenda, and it would start with very, very tough questions that need to, uh, very, very unpopular answers.
Thank you so much, Dr. Abiyese Kutili, uh, former Vice President of the World Bank and a former Minister of Education. Thank you so much for your thoughts there. We'll take another moment, and when we return, a former Nigerian federal lawmaker, Honorable West Dowser, who served as a member of the House of Representatives. He joins us also from Abuja studio. And what we should be looking at specifically is what exactly goes to the National Assembly in salaries and allowances. And are these morally right for us as a nation at this critical time in history? We'll take a moment. I'll be back. Nia chapter 1 verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be belief, and there shall be holiness. The Liberation City presents what night with the king. No one in your family has ever been a millionaire. After this conference, if I be a man of God, you will be the first to break the protocol. For the first time ever, two of Africa's most celebrated prophetic giants come together in a hell-raising, demon-destroying prophetic tag team. It is what night with the king. Ministering, Dr. Chris Okafor, guest minister, prophet Hubert Angel, guest artist, Yinka Ayefele, Tobe Alabi, Tom Red, Sam Ebube, Jerry Omole, Gossier Okeke. Day, Friday, July the 3rd, 2015, venue, Tafawa Balewa Square, Unicorn, Lagos, time, 7 p.m.